So out on the bench here I have a selection of different rotators from the late 80s to the late 1990s and the purpose of having these out is to go over the definition of a term that gets used a little bit here and there brushed and brushless rotators. Um, it's not a new concept to the industry. Getting power to a spinning light bulb has always been an issue. The Twin Sonic had motor type brushes that contacted a copper plate uh, that allowed the bulbs to spin and still get power. Uh, they were a integral part of the design and they had a pretty low failure rate and were pretty easily replaceable. They kind of set the tone for how light bars would work if the bulb itself rotated. And Code 3, pictured here in their uh, SD, used similar products which were essentially just DC motor brushes uh, which were very cheap to replace and their wear wasn't significant. Now Whelan had actually developed other answers uh, like this gearbox with pass-through power spindle combination that was used on the 80 series uh, light bars uh, and worked pretty well. Um, they also had previous to that developed uh, an isolation uh, system to insulate a power uh, rod going through the rotation rod for the 88 series which also worked pretty well. Um, so in the late 80s early 90s there was a departure and uh, the plastic rotators uh, with bulb on rotator started to come out um, and you saw these in things from the responder cadet, the responder mini bar, um, the other rotating products of the time, uh, the Advantage Plus uh, shared the rotators from the smaller responder mini bar and then your responder bar got bigger and it shared the rotators from the Advantage light bar, uh, whatever that might be at the time. The Advantage went through a variety of rotators. The first ones, the first two main styles were brushed, if you will. Um, the bulb was on the reflector and spinning with the reflector. Uh, they updated the reflector and left the brushes and went to this style reflector and eventually went to this brushless uh, stationary bulb reflector for the Advantage bar and there was a lot of overlap between the products. So how were people doing this uh, if they weren't spinning the bulb? Well as far back as the fireball the bulb just sat in the middle and the reflector spun around it. That seemed to work pretty well for the fireball and it was an iconic light that was unmistakably reliable. Uh, the other option was to keep your bulb stationary and suspend it downwards inside a reflector and the rota beams, deputy, corporal, um, those models of lights for Whelan uh, did just that they suspended a bulb stationary as well. And then later uh, the rota beam that came out around the same time as some of these other lights we're talking about with brushes, there was a version that did this as well. Uh, they suspended a light bulb inside a spinning reflector and this crossed over to the industrial market where sparks were a no-no. Um, you could use direct drive. So brushes showed up in other places too. Um, this trilight um, utilized a combination brush spindle. Um, you can see the motor style brush there and a contact wheel to take the power up to the rotating assembly. Um, that 
specific motor brush is very similar to what you'll see in the uh, second type of brushed rotator design that Whalen came out with. And again, sort of similar to the Twin Sonic, uh, except that the brush is stationary and uh, the shaft spins. So this is the Type 1, or the original uh, brushing, and I, I call this finger tip brushing. These uh, bent pieces of metal uh, made contact with the uh, places that the brushes would make contact to supply power and ground. Um, there were some failure issues, which I think is why they went away from them. Uh, but these appeared in all of the rotating lamps of the time, whether that be Advantage, uh, Advantage Plus, or Responder. Um, they did even appear in the first generation uh, of Advantage Rotator. I just don't happen to have an example of that uh, able to be yanked out and demonstrated. But uh, both... Uh, quote spinning bulb versions of the Advantage light bar uh, utilized both styles of brushes but first this style of brush. Um, this would be a Responder um, or Cadet or Advantage Plus rotator in this case uh, utilizing the uh, finger or fingertip style contact brushes um, there were some failures there. Um, they could easily lose their tension and you would get bad contact. Um, they weren't nearly as easily replaced since they were proprietary. They weren't just a motor brush. Uh, they did work. A plastic boot was supplied to protect them and they, they worked out decently. Uh, update to pretty much all of their line was the use of the motor style brushes. Um, same basic design, you're just using those spring-loaded uh, motor brushes instead. Um, most of the later version of any brushed rotator, this is what you'll see. Uh, I'm sure they were much more reliable. Uh, they continued to make the Rota Beam with the uh, Advantage uh, Generation 1 rotator on top, which is this, uh, with the uh, brushes of this style or for quite some time after discontinuing uh, the brushed idea in other fields. Uh, I don't think there was a lot of failure there. Um, I feel like they would be easily serviced and I don't really see the problem with them. Looking at the plastic nature of the uh, reflectors and some of the damage that's been done to these, it's really not to that portion of the light. It's uh, discoloration of the reflective surfaces. Heat damage to the reflector was by far a bigger issue in my opinion or bulb issues. The smaller versions that went into the uh, smaller responders for a minute. The responders had mostly upsized to advantage rotators at this point. This is more advantage plus and cadet at this point. But rotators, no matter the size, were pretty much moving to this style of brush. I think they uh, ended up being, in my opinion, not the failure point either. Um, when I replaced these, it was usually due to failure of the reflector to continue being reflective, uh, not motor brushes. Uh, so I'm not sure it was that terrible of a design overall. So this is the improvement of the brushless. You have uh, power going to your stationary bulb and the bulb just sits there uh, and the uh, motor spins the reflector around it. Uh, unfortunately they went to this snap-in bulb that was pretty much the bane of the uh, existence of anybody working on these products. But you can see how the bulb is stationary and the reflector spins. 
I guess there is no debating though that removing brushes does take out a failure point. This is also the world's slowest spinning uh, advantage rotator. I'm not sure why. Um, these all came out of my parts bucket, so the expectation of these being in great shape is, is not that high. But same idea, you're spinning the reflector around the bulb. Um, and when that translated first on the right there to the Advantage Plus, uh, they kind of cut down a bigger reflector. There's a lot of light loss with it, so that quickly got revised to the one on the left, um, which was really quite effective as well. Um, these did have in common with your brush rotators that it was plastic on plastic, meaning uh, a plastic outer gear spinning around a plastic spindle. Uh, there's no bearings or lubrication or anything, so that was a friction point. Um, and that could have been a failure point, too. And the comparison between the different uh, brushed and unbrushed types, they all put out adequate light, honestly. So um, it was more of a failure point, I think, or a maintenance issue. So looking through my collection, I found a variety of different versions of different rotators. Um, we have brushed um, of various types uh, in various model lights. None of them appear to be excessively worn, but a lot of my collection is near uh, new old stock. Like that one's barely been run at all. I don't uh, foresee having a lot of problems with these and you can actually still get the brushes. Uh, the Cadet or the CR212 um, was made up until the late 2000, almost 2010 I believe, and it has the motor style brushes. So the brushed style Cadet rotator is one of the longest made rotators in wheel and history. Um, this particular one that I bought uh, was manufactured in 2005. So that's a very long run for a reflector type that was ultimately scrapped. Every type of rotating assembly is mechanical and has its failure points and it's good and it's bad. So I'm not trying to say that one is better than the other here. I'm just uh, trying to give an outline of what the different types were and what the different uh, terminology and um, models meant and how they were used between the late 80s and late 90s and in the case of the cadet uh, into the uh, 2000s as well. Thanks for watching.